this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is the Lian Lee Lee 011 Dynamic Evo. This is a really interesting mid-tower case from Lian Lee Lee with a number of different potentials. It's been around for a while now, so there's quite a few different videos out there on it. And it's pretty interesting in a number of different ways because you have the ability to vertically GPU mount and do some other crazy things, including upright GPU mounting on the side of the case. You can also mount the thing upside down, and it'll take up to three 360mm radiators and 10 fans. And you can see a finished build here that I've completed in a pretty standard layout with Leon Lee's Infinity fans and a Kraken Z73 from NZXT, which as you can see has a bit of a weird problem going on with the display at the moment, but don't worry, you can rotate that round. And in this video, I'm gonna be setting up the case and showing you the steps for it and talking about the various things of interest that I discovered along the way while building in it. And I basically wanted to make a move to this case because I'm a big fan of Leon Lee's cases and I wanted to try out something. So I bought a vertical GPU kit you can get to go with this case as well as an air front panel and I'll talk about those a bit more later on and there's a number of other things that you can purchase including ability to move around the IO and as I said vertical and upright GPU kits and a number of other accessories but I basically want to show you the standard setup process and talk about the things of interest that I discovered while building in it and show you how to build in it so if you're looking to build in here in a fairly straightforward setup without any additional purchases then stick with me because I'm going to show you what to do and how to do it and also talk about some of the highlights of the case. Now it is a very nice case. I'm really a big fan of Leon Lee's cases using the Dynamic XL and the Air and the Snow Edition of the Mini and now the Evo and I've had done a video on each of those and gone into some depth on it but there's some interesting highlights and changes. For example this side panel, the glass side panel is held in place with a screw on top. So where I was thinking you could just pull it up and take it out, you can't actually because it's held in place with a screw there. So it's not actually going to fall off at any point, which is good. And not that I had an issue with that on previous cases, but it's basically held in place with clips and a screw now, so it's well secured in there. So if you're paranoid about tempered glass panels falling off, not an issue. At the back of the case, you have a cable hiding channel, and you'll notice there are various mounting points on that. You can mount SSDs on there, and also there's a hard drive cage, so you have the ability to have two hard drives or multiple SSDs because you can actually mount them on the back on the left hand side through that cable hiding channel there and in the cage or on the front of the case. So there's absolutely loads of mounting positions for drives. However, I did have problems with my SSD because I'm literally only installing one SSD in this. I'm using NVMe storage for the rest of it, but more on that later on. And then you have obviously a bunch of bundled cables from the front panel. There's one RGB cable that's worth bearing in mind because there's an RGB strip on the front and I'll show you where to connect that up later on. But you also have HD audio, USB-C, standard USB-A connection. But this front panel connection is really handy because it hasn't got multiple pins. So you basically just one plug and play. Then you have HD audio for the 3.5 mil connection, big fat USB-A connection and then obviously USB-C as well. And I'll show you where to plug those all in later on and connect them up to your motherboard. But a nice little bundle of cables and the RGB cable, which is a five volt RGB connector. And that connect up to your motherboard to sync the RGB lighting with your motherboard as well. One of the interesting highlights here is I'm using Corsair's HX 1500i power supply unit. This is a 1,500 watt PSU that of course I was kind enough to send across. And the reason for this is I actually am planning eventually on going for NVIDIA's 4000 series. I'm also using a Core i9 processor and a lot of RAM, 64 gigabytes of RAM and a number of NVMe drives and an SSD. And obviously, as you saw, a lot of fans as well. So I want the power to ensure that I've got enough. But what I thought initially was this might potentially be a problem because it is quite big. We'll get to that in a minute. Obviously, it delivers a lot of power, so it's going to be perfect for 4000 series. It might be a bit excessive. You probably could have gone for a smaller one, but this is what they sent across. I'm going to do a video separately on it and go into a bit more depth on it. But as you can see, it's a modular power supply unit. It gives you plenty of connectivity, absolutely loads of potential connections there, and a number of useful ones for this build, but also for a future build, because I'm planning on moving to Intel's 13th generation soon. 
I mean, revisiting this case as well and going back and rebuilding in it with some different things. So stick around and subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see that. Inside that box you'll see loads of cables, absolutely comes with loads. So if you're concerned about connectivity and you are using the 4000 series, that's worth keeping in mind because it has absolutely loads of PCIe cables in there. So perfect for the new graphics cards. You'll see multiple of them, <laughs> loads. They're not messing about when it comes to the connectivity for graphics cards and other devices in this power supply. So it's well worth considering. And they're also quite flat, as you can see. So these are flat cables, which should, in theory, make cable management easier and end up with a nicer look at the end as well. Anyway, I'm going to talk you through the steps just in case you're not aware already of what cables you need to connect as standard. So you have the 24 pin motherboard power supply cable. This connects via the two connections here in the top right marked motherboard. I'm going to go into all the little various steps here. If you want to skip forward a bit, if you already know about power supplies, then you can do that and I'll just go back to the case, but I thought it might be useful people that are new and are just looking to build in this case to get an overview of how to do it. So connect up this cable, this is one of the most important, you need to make sure this is properly seated both in the power supply and on the motherboard, otherwise your PC will not power on. And then you have a number of different CPU cables that we'll get to in a second, which will vary from motherboard to motherboard. But you can see I'm demonstrating just outside the case so it's easy to view on a different motherboard how you'd plug that in, but usually 24 pin sits on the right hand side near the top, and it's a bit of a fiddle to get in, and it's a chunky beast as well. Then you have CPU cables. These are power cables that run to the top left of the motherboard usually, and they vary from motherboard to motherboard. Some you might find two, some you might find more than two, three or four, depending on which level of motherboard you bought. If you bought a high end, sometimes you might find you need more, and you can see that this marked PCIe slash CPU so I'm putting that at the top left as well. And that, as you can see, and again in the demo on the demo motherboard, top left, two 8-pin CPU connectors plugging in there. And I will show the process for doing that when it's in the case later on, but it just makes it a bit easier to view at this stage. So that's the motherboard power supply mostly sorted out. And then you have SATA. So this is a flat power connectors. You need these for fan controllers and other things. For example, you would have seen earlier on that we have RGB lighting cables for both the motherboard 24 pin and for the GPU as well. I need those flat power connectors for that and for the SSD. So here's a Kingston SSD drive, for example, that needs the flat power connector and it's daisy chainable. So you can connect multiple different devices up to this single cable and then plug that end into the power supply and then you can basically power lots of things from one cable. So back to the case, and one of the things that I came across as a problem immediately was one of the little panels at the back. So I'm just removing that. You might not need to do this if you've got a smaller PSU, but it's an interesting point. And that's the interesting highlight of this case is it's fully modular in a number of ways. You can mount and install things in a variety of positions. You can move things about. For example, that hard drive cage can move to the bottom and you can mount your power supply unit at the top instead if you want to. But you can see this bracket basically sat at the back there and would block some of the cables. What I found is this PSU is absolutely massive. As you can see, takes up quite a bit of room and that bracket was getting in the way of the cable so I couldn't actually install the PSU in this state. But I have put all the cables in place that I'm going to need. And now you're going to see just some of the mess of what's going to happen there. But basically it makes it easier if you plug them in before you start installing the PSU. Also we're mounting the PSU with the fan facing towards the back of the case. Because there are air vents on the side panel at the back panel. And so it, it will suck in cold air from there and then blow hot air out of the back. So this is the correct mounting procedure for that. And you will see that it does actually take this PSU which I was a bit concerned it wouldn't, I'll be honest, because it's not a massive case. It's certainly not as big as the Dynamic XL, obviously, but it is bigger than the Air Mini. So it is capable of taking this, but as you can see, there is going to be some cable management issues. And you will find later on that I had quite a big cable management problem. And that is a point of note, because you will see that there are various different Velcro ties along the middle channeling there. And there's a little bit of space up here. And it looks fine at the minute, but let me tell you later on, it becomes a big problem. There's also no cable tidying loops, so you don't get to use any cable ties at any point. It would be nice to have some at the top. Anyway, I am now going to be using the NZXT Kraken Z73, 
which I've actually harvested from a previous build. It's been knocking around for a while. And also Lian Lee's Infinity fans. And I've done a video separately on these because I think they're gorgeous. And they're really nice looking fans. So I'm going to combine those two together, which it is possible to do. And I'll talk a bit more about the wiring of that later on because that's something people keep asking me about. And then I wanted to see whether it was possible to essentially fit it in from the rear. Because in previous cases, I've managed to actually fit the radiator at the back of the case and hide some of it away. What I found is it actually doesn't seem to be possible here. But we will notice that there are mounting points for fans in various sizes. So you've got 120mm, 140mm options. And as I said, you can mount the radiators potentially in three different places. So this is ideal if you want to go full liquid loop and go for a hard system. So that's worth bearing in mind. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to side mount it, although there's plenty of space to top mount as well as another option. And I will be setting it up in this sort of direction. One of the other things that you'll have noticed earlier on is that the tubes are on the top, and I'll talk more about that in a little while. But one of the other things that people keep saying to me lately is you need to mount tubes down. That is wrong. You do not need to do that. As long as the pump is not at the highest point, you will be fine. You won't have any issues. I've been mounting radiators like this and running them in my case for a long time without any problems. So there's no dramas there. Don't worry about that. You will see now what I'm going to do is essentially to mount it to the back. And that does become a little bit awkward. It is a bit of a problem because you have to sort of hold it into place and then mount with the tiny little screws at the rear to hold it there. But you do have the ability to move it up and down and position it. One of the things I do like about this is it isn't terribly visible. So with the XL case, for example, there was a gap at the top or the bottom if you mounted the radiator like this. This is a little bit neater. And it's well thought out and well designed. And Lee and Lee's cases are really good like this. Plenty of space. You can see there's actually quite a little bit of room back here. So you could theoretically do push-pull. I don't have enough fans to be able to mount another three on the rear of those Infinity fans. And obviously you lose some of that RGB lighting effect anyway if you mount it at the rear. But there is enough space. It is quite spacious despite being a relatively small compact case and... So you do have the ability to do that if you want to, which is an added bonus of it. Also, potentially you have room to cable manage a bit more. And as I said, also the other option is potentially mounting multiple SSDs back here instead of fans or radiators as well. So lots of storage capabilities and flexibility. And that's one of the benefits of this case overall and the design of it is you have the potential to do it in loads of different ways. And I'm just demonstrating just one. So with that finished, the radio is now mounted into place and I'm going to put the Infinity fans on it. Now I have to think about the cooling um, because which way around do you set them up? Obviously they look nicer face forward with that nice Infinity mirror in the middle. But really do I want to pull air out of the case over the radiator or do I want to pull air from the rear of the case through the radiator and cool it down so it's a bit of a thought on what which is best obviously this way around looks nicer with the mirrors on the front it would look superior and then though what i would be doing is only intaking with the bottom three fans and then exhausting with the rest which probably wouldn't be that good uh, so what i've decided to do is i'm going to basically position them so they're pulling air through the radiator so the cold air is getting pulled out from the outside of the case through the radiator and then into the case that way also adjusting those cables so those cables on that fan is really good because you can flip the cables round change the direction of them and then i'm running them to the rear i have done more in-depth videos on how to wire these fans and how to set them up in your case in multiple ways so be sure to check out the links in the description to that if you want to find out more about it but basically now i'm mounting those to the radiator with long radiator screws and that's that lot sorted so now the radiator is ready to go and we can then worry about the rest of the fans so this case does have the option to mount three fans on the bottom and both the bottom and the top have fan trays and they're both secured in place with both clips and there's a thumb screw on the bottom one and there's two tiny screws on the top one and again it's about working out which way around 
you want to put the fans. So I'm putting them face down this time because they're basically going to be sucking air from the bottom of the case. There's a nice large gap at the bottom and it does have a good dust filter on it as well. So you're basically positioning the fans so that they're sucking air in that way. Also making sure that the cable's in a good position so it'll run to the rear nicely and then just screwing it down. Unfortunately, again, that means that I'm losing the infinity mirror look. So I haven't got that because they're facing the bottom. So you don't get to see the glorious view there, which is a bit of a shame. Um, it'd be nice if they were optimized so that you could see this on both sides. But unfortunately, it's not that easy for them to do. However, it still looks great, I think. And the benefit of these fans is they're nice and quiet. And also the RGB lighting is pretty magnificent. You've seen some of that at the beginning. And if you go and check it out, you'll see it in the video dedicated on those fans too. So now I'm basically securing those to the bottom. Again, you have the option to go larger or to mount a radiator if you're going for full liquid loops. There's plenty of different options there. And then it clips back into place. So there's clips at the rear that the, the tray clips into, and then it just held in place with a thumb screw at the front. And then you'll see that there are plenty of gaps to run the cables around through the back as well and at the bottom. So we've got plenty of positions to be able to do that and to hide cables away. So it's really easy to cable manage and make this case look pretty neat. And that's one of the various different thoughts of it is you could, at least you can hide a lot of the mess of the cables at the rear. So the top fan tray is held in place with two screws at the back. These trays are really secured in place. And previous cases are built from Lee and Lee has just been a um, thumb screw, which has made life a little bit easier. These ones you have to, a lot of screws to remember to take out and to put back in. So just take care you don't lose these because they are tiny little screws and it would be frustrating. But it is still pretty secure with clips at the front as well. And again, now what we're trying to work out is where the fans are going to go, what which direction. I'm going to exhaust with three fans on the top and one at the rear. So we've pulled cold air in with all the others and now we're going to put the hot air out of the top. And that will allow some of the RGB to shine. But again, depending on the position of your case and where you're sitting, you're not going to see the infinity mirrors because they've been facing down. So this is the top view where we basically sit towards the top of the case. So basically pulling the air out from the case and exhaust straight out of the top. And as you've seen already that the top shield has a nice perforation to it. So it will stop dust from falling down into your case for the most part. But also allow for some nice breathing. So... Now we have that set up and again, making sure direction of the cables, where they're going to face and where you're going to run them to, to try and keep things nice and tidy. Then that clips back into place when it's finished. And don't forget to secure it with those little screws. So that's all those fans done. And then again, you can see there's a hole at the top at the back. So you're actually able to run that cable past the radiator and through and tuck it away at the back there. So looking pretty good at this stage. And then the final one is just to install one fan at the rear. And again, that's set to exhaust. And this is the one of the only fans that you're really going to get to see that infinity mirror on with it set up like this. And then the cables run through to the rear at the top there with plenty of room there. You will see just how much space there is at the top there. So you could easily mount a 360 mil radiator and now I am using an ATX motherboard, but you'll see that there's a rather a large gap at the top with plenty of space for your cabling and also to run fan cables and radiator cables and motherboard cables and other things. So the setup's pretty easy and spacious. It is really spacious for such a small case, at least at the front. You can see that the back is in danger of getting pretty messy. And the good thing about these Lee and Lee cables, to be fair, the Lee and Lee fans, as you've seen, is they clip together. So uni fans all daisy chaining together. So they all clip together and then you just have one cable coming out. So with the infinity fans, it's just a single cable with a flat connection that then connects up to the control box. This control box has the ability to connect up to four groups of fans with up to 16 fans total. So you can have four fans per group up to 16 total. Obviously, I've got that set up in groups of three for the most part and then that single one at the back but the connections are all the same at least that's what i'm doing at this point it is worth noting that you do have the option instead to use the one group that's on the radiator you could use the cable that comes with the single fan to change how you're setting it up there because that single fan has two connections there's an rgb connection and a power connection you can connect the power connection up to the cpu fan header or to the pump on the on the cooler itself and then use the rgb connection connected up to the controller as you've just seen me do there 
and then plug that in instead. So that is an option. Now this control box has a variety of cable connections. They include SATA power, USB, RGB, and the fan power control for PWM control as well. And I have gone into a bit more depth on this connection and how you set it up. And I'll link to those videos in the description. But essentially what we need to do is make sure that it's connected up to the SATA power. So again, those flat connections that I showed you earlier on for the PSU, connecting those up there, there's two coming out of this controller alone. We're going to need another controller for the RGB cables as well, which you can see here. So these are the strimmers, this is V2 strimmers, and they have a, another box, control box, as you can see. And I've got one for the 24 pin and then one connection with two connectors on it for my graphics card as well. So you've got to run this through to the front and also connect it up to that 24 pin power cable that I showed you from the power supply unit earlier on. Now you can see that I'm adding even more cables into the case and it's going to get really, really busy in a minute. And that does become a bit of a problem because I actually struggle to get the door on. But I do like to hide my cable shame at the back. And you do have some channeling or it's not going to get in the way of the radiator. But if you're mounting a lot of hard drives back here, this is something to keep in mind. If you're going as much RGB as I am and you also plan on putting hard drives in there and SSDs, you're going to have struggle with the amount of space. Although, to be fair, this PSU might be overkill in terms of the size of the thing. And it's taking up a lot of room. With a smaller one, you might not have as many problems. So connect up the PCIe cables, the dedicated PCIe cables that I ran earlier on. I showed you where to connect those up to the power supply unit. These are for the graphics cards. We need two 8-pin connections for my GPU. You may need more. And then you clip those into place and that will give some nice RGB lighting at the front of the case that you'll see later on. So those connections are all done. But <laughs> you can see I'm going to have to deal with that mess. Now this is a ROG Formula motherboard. This is a 12th gen Intel motherboard. I've got 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, Kingston Fury Beast RAM. Also multiple crucial NVMe drives. So I'm using a P5 Plus and a P3 as well and some other drives that you can't see here. This motherboard is fantastic. I've done a video on it separately. It is intended for full liquid loop cooling and I was intending to upgrade at some point. I just haven't got around to it yet. But in this moment, I'm using the Kraken Z73, as I said. So I'm just mounting the setup here. And this is for the LGA1700. But it's worth noting this motherboard will work with 1200 socket as well. So you actually have the ability to do that because it has two mounting points. So you essentially have four holes around the CPU, but actually they're further out and further in. So there's actually two lots of connections. So you can use brackets from either 1200 or 1700, which is one of the good things about ROG motherboards that they have the ability to do that. So just putting in the standoff screws now, I've done a video separately on this cooler as well, if you want to see the installation process for that. And again, I'll link to that in the description. But basically these are the steps for it with the 1700. So we're basically mounting them installing the standoff screws in here. Now I've reused this CPU cooler multiple times because I really like it. It is it's good at cooling with the Leon Lee fans on it. It's nice and quiet and it also looks really nice and you have a readout for both GPU and CPU temperatures that you can put on that I really like because you can just see at a glance whether there's anything wrong with the system or you can use GIFs or images or whatever else. The motherboard also is really sp spiffing in a number of ways. It has a little display just below the CPU, which you can use with a variety of things, including system information. And it has multiple points for mounting NVMe drives, which will run at good speeds too. And it really looks really nice, especially in this case with all the white accents on it and the RGB as well. So really nice, suitable combo for this, although it is expensive. And then the mounting process. So now you're gonna see what I was talking about earlier on. You can see just how small the motherboard looks. This is an AGX motherboard, but there's a massive gap at the top here. It's quite a spacious case, and that's no bad thing. And one of the other things of interest that I wanted to talk about is you can also purchase a front panel replacement. So where there's a glass panel at the front, you can also buy an air panel instead. So you can then mount three more fans at the front of the case, pulling air in from the front instead of having that glass so if you want to do that that's an optional purchase that i have got and i was planning on changing at some point and adding in more fans just to see what it would be like but if you can see just how many cables i have to deal with in a minute it actually 
has put me off using that because it's probably going to be a bit of a problem. But anyway, we are then mounting the motherboard down and then doing the thermal paste. And many people will tell me that I'm using too much thermal paste here. And please feel free to leave a comment on that and your opinion on it because that will help with engagement on the video and support me <laughs> and this video in general. If you haven't subscribed and you like my content, be sure to hit that sub button. It'll really help me out and just give me a thumbs up and drop a comment to let me know if this has been helpful. Hopefully some good insight. I like to go into a lot of depth on all the different stages of these sorts of builds just to give you some info on the various different options and what to do not in just setting up the PC, but also the things of interest along the way. And I am going to be rebuilding this PC at some point as well. So I'll be doing a completely different build in it. Now, what I wanted to show here was the issues with the Kraken Z73. The tubes on the right hand side generally is how I would mount it, but that then pushes up against the RAM. So what I thought I'd do this time instead is to mount it with the tubes up, which you can see quite close to the VRM at the top as well, which is a little bit problematic. The other issue with this is then means that the main cables that they connect up in a variety of ways are then on the left hand side and trying to make them sort of look neat hiding it away is pretty difficult. Now the one thing that you can do is you can change the display in the software so it is possible to mount it like this without any issue but then when you run those cables to the back you can see that they sort of sit over the top of the motherboard. It doesn't look very good. I'm not very happy with the final view of it but it's either that or have the tubes pressing up against the RAM you could potentially mount it in different positions. If I top mounted it, then I probably could have put the tubes on the left hand side or maybe at the bottom and then ran the cables in a different direction. But if you cable tie those cables up, you can neaten that up in a way that's sort of satisfying and it ends up looking OK and maybe not much of a problem. So there's one single cable that runs from that pump head that needs to connect up to the AIO pump header on your motherboard. The rest of those cables include a variety of things, but you also need this USB connection. So there's a micro USB connection on the pump. Again, that's another cable that runs to the back of the case, right down to the bottom and then plugs into the USB header on the motherboard, which I'll show you in a second. You're actually gonna need three USB connections for this setup because I've got the fan connection and also the pump and also the strimmer cables. So all of them require a USB connection and I actually end up using a Y splitter to do that. So now I have to deal with some of this cabling. So again, the, the strimmer cable replaces the standard 24 pin power supply cable, and we're plugging that in on the right hand side, and that gives some glorious RGB lighting that adds to the overall effect of the case and also helps this case shine really nicely. And so the next bit is the, the power from the pump. So the pump itself requires power, so you need SATA power, that's those flat connectors, but you also need it for the fan connector controller box and also for the strimmer. You need to make sure you've got enough SATA connections plugged in to the PSU to be able to do that because you need two for the control box for the fans, one for the control box for the strimmers, one for the case itself and one for the cooler too as well. So lots and lots of cables to plug in. Then three USB connections for the bottom. Now I've got a Y splitter cable here that for used for the USB connection. So that puts two USBs into one. This motherboard only has two USB connections at the bottom. You can get some motherboards that have more. This one only has two, but you can also get various different Y splitters or sort of hubs for USB connections I've used in the past sometimes two or four extra going into one single one. So it's worth looking around for those if you're struggling to sort this out and then that shouldn't be a problem. In the top left, don't forget to plug in those eight pin CPU power connections that we plugged in earlier on. That's important too. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you do have the option to connect up the fans on the radiator to a single cable for the power connection. So where we've got the pump head plugged into the AIO pump header, you could potentially plug those fans into the CPU fan header or directly into the power connections coming out of the all-in-one cooler. On the right-hand side, also don't forget USB-C connection here. One of the nice things about this case is it's a 90 degree angle cable, so it actually ends up looking pretty neat. And then you have the flat USB-A connection, which isn't as easy to manipulate. But even with the radiator on there, there was plenty of room to be able to push that in. I've had trouble in the past with smaller cases where it was difficult to get connections in like that, where a radiator was side mounted. So there's plenty of space here. Now, one of the things that I did do is I bought the vertical GPU bracket which is an additional purchase that allows you to show off 
the glorious GPU that you've got. So this is a 3090 OC Vision card from Gigabyte, which I think looks really nice. And I wanted to put it in a vertical position like this. The downside here, as you can see, is I am now blocking the Kraken Z73, which would be terrible and it would look awful. And I was really unhappy about that. Also, I have an M2 expander card, which comes with the motherboard, that allows you to put two more NVMe drives in there. And I wanted to use that as well. And it would be very close to the bracket. So I ended up having to put my GPU back where it would normally mount, which is sad because it would have looked great in that other position. But if you're using a cooler with a display on it, you probably don't want to buy that vertical GPU bracket. It is an additional purchase, so I've now just wasted money, which is annoying. So hopefully you won't do the same if you've made it this far. Hopefully that'll be useful to you. And then another point is if you're also doing what I'm doing with a Hyper M2 card, that usually sits in the bottom slot, the X16 slot, and you can see it's nearly blocking the fans as well, so there's not that much space at the bottom. Now in terms of SSD mounting, and hard disk drives, you have various different points where you can mount them. I'd recommend checking out the link in the description to the official Lian Lee page on this case because you'll see that there are various different paces. You can mount it on the hard drive tray cage, you can mount it on the cable hygiene bar, you can mount four on the front bottom instead of fans, and you can mount them on the side at the back as well. So you have the position and capabilities to mount multiple SSDs and hard drives if you want to. And the mounting procedure for doing SSDs is really straightforward because it has these little rubber washers and then some screws that you put in place. And then it just sort of slides into the holes and the various positions. So one of the options is to mount them on this cable hiding bar. So the channeling there and then to run your cables in. Now you can basically put it in like this fairly straightforward, relatively easily. What I found though is it actually is quite difficult then to then mount that in and to then run the cables through into it. I struggled with it to the point that I ended up getting get, and got frustrated. I must have been doing something wrong, but there's just not enough room, not quite enough room to get the cables through that little gap and to plug in without them having a horrible bend in or not quite going in there and then not stretching through enough. So I ended up actually mounting it on the hard drive tray, which is one of the options. So you can just mount it on the outside of the hard drive tray and there's still enough room there for the case panel to go on the back. But what you can see now is with everything in place, I actually have a nightmare of cables going on back here. As I said earlier on, you're not really blocking the radiator though. And once you put that cable hiding tray in place, it does sort of hide a lot away of that shame. But because there's no like loops for tying things down and just because of the sheer number of cables I've got and the size of the power supply unit, it does become really problematic. I actually found that I had real difficulty trying to seat this down and to get it to stay there. If I also had SSDs and hard disk drives in here, it would have been an absolute nightmare. So I think that's something to bear in mind that there's just not quite enough room and it is going to vary depending on what you're setting up and installing in there. If I didn't have as much RGB, for example, or if I had a smaller PSU, it would be an issue. But if you went all in and also had hard disk drives and SSDs, you probably wouldn't be able to shut the back panel. So that is the end of that build, and here's what it looks like as the finished product. Although again, watch out for the display, because I need to rotate that in NZXT's cam software. But you can see the RGB lighting on the streamers, the Infinity fans still look really nice, even with the mirrors not facing towards you. And I'm pretty happy with the end result of it, with the exception of those cables coming out of the crack and cooler. But I am going to make some significant changes to it. So despite this looking pretty magnificent, I'm going to change it up. And it's not because I'm not happy with it. This is going to end up being a future build. So this is a 12th gen Core i9 12900K. And I'm about to swap it out for a 13th gen i9 13900K. So I'll be swapping the motherboard out, the CPU out, and the RAM out, and some other things as well as well as the fans and some more bits. So come back if you want to see that and want to see a second build in it. And let me know in the comments what you thought of this so far and if it was helpful. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching and a big shout out to my YouTube members who help support the channel. If you find my content interesting, why not consider clicking that join button to see the benefits of being a member. Really appreciate you watching. Have a great life. 
This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.